in a family of a Pirk defense, there are three openings. Three openings. Pirk defense itself, Gurgididze system, which is e4, g6, d4, bishop g7, knight c3, c6, and hippo. Well, that's the way they call, they call it actually in different parts of the world, different names. When they go d6, followed by a6 and b6, delaying knight f6. Now, what can I tell you about this opening? The hippo opening is for people that don't want to learn uh, opening theory. They want, they are looking for easy way out of the opening and they are not intending to get in any opening bottles. And if you are not treating it properly, black can get reasonable or good position. There are several approaches to this opening. Well, and knight f3 and now a6. Black is trying to play b6, bishop b7. They intend white to play a4 and then go b6, bishop b7 and possibly e6 and knight e7. Well, there are certain rules about the openings in chess. If player with black plays very passively, then it's kind of your obligation to start immediate assault. That's not the matter of style when we start playing very aggressively with white, that's kind of a requirement. And I think the only right way to play against this hippo opening is to play very, very aggressively with white. And that's the system I want to introduce you to. After a6, I don't think there is a need for us to go a4. We go simply bishop d3. So there is no need for us to go a4. We simply play bishop to d3. We don't want to waste time on uh, pawn moves. We are already far ahead in development. But when you are far ahead in development, you have to go out of your way to make sure you open the position. e6. This is the common uh, way to play for black. Knight e7. There are several different move orders. This is one of the most common. After knight e7, we go e5. That's where we start being aggressive. We want to get big space advantage after d5 or open position and try to organize attack on black's king. After e5, suppose black goes d5. When they go d5, they definitely gonna have very bad game here. I think the easiest way to play for white is to go knight e2 to prepare in the future against c5, c3. Secure the center. Of course on c5 we can take dc, but assuming that black may prepare c5, we can go c3, and after c5 we have secured center and big space advantage on the king side and it's very unclear why black developed bishop on g7 where the diagonal a1 h8 diagonal is completely dead for black so after e5 d5 is not a very good response 
So let's try knight c6. Black's trying to put pressure on e5. We cannot exhaust every move order Black can possibly have. But on this move order, we just simply go rook e1. And on castle, I would suggest to go queen e2. But I'm reluctant to go bishop f4 due to a tactical shot. Bishop f4, normally the move we wanted to make, but there is some tactical shot that gives black equality. Now d, e, and knight takes e6. Because on bishop takes e5, black simply gets their piece back and they will have an extra pawn. So, and after knight e6, we hardly have any advantage. So we don't want black to simplify position. That's for sure. And we're gonna go queen e2. And now after d takes c and d takes c, you see that black has severe space problem. We can go bishop g5, knight e4, or bishop f4, rook a d1. White has a very big advantage. And on knight d4, we can go queen e4. It, it's not gonna change anything. Queen takes f3 and knight c6, queen g3. You see, white is clearly better. Bishop g5 is coming, rook a d1. Black has problem with both bishops and they are severely limited in a space. White has a big advantage. Of course, black can now black can try a different move order. But our approach stays the same. Well, let's try this move order. <coughs> e4 d6 d4 knight f6 d4 actually d4 g6 knight f3 bishop g7 knight c3 a6 bishop d3 and now try b5 b5 is very consistent with a6 move because they play a6 to go b5 and possibly b4 later and develop bishop on b7. This seems very logical. It's not very good, but it's very logical. I really wanna go e5. And if we look at this position close, then we can realize that black has a very, very bad game. And the opening itself is wrong. I have a list of wrong openings. Openings that are counterintuitive, that are anti-positional, and contradicts with the main idea of uh, developing pieces and castling quick. After e5, suppose black goes knight d7. After knight d7, we can easily get an advantage with e6. But I like on fe a4, and if b4, knight e4, problem with e6 pawn is very, very difficult to overcome for a black. And on knight f8, castle and bishop b7, they should be included. The way it should go actually here, before playing knight d7, bishop b7. That's another move order and maybe more logical. After bishop b7, here we castle, and after bishop b7, we go e5. And again, knight d7, that's where we go e6, fe, a4, b4, and knight e4. You could have done this in any move order for white. The, in general, black's position has a lot of long-term problems. After
after knight e4, knight gf6, knight f2, g5, knight f8, and rook e1. And queen d7, we can go c4. This is very strong move. So taking d5 square away from black, maybe bishop will go on d5 later to protect the e6 pawn. So c4 is a very good positional move. Black has severe problems. They, it's unclear how they can finish their development. Something like h6 will run to, into immediate problem. Knight takes f6, bishop takes f6. We were waiting for h6 move. And now we play knight takes e6, knight takes e6, bishop takes g6, check. And after king f8, bishop f5, black is losing here because even the move like bishop takes g2, where we are not going to take on g2 because there is knight f4 check. But the best move, best of all, after bishop takes g2, queen g4, it nearly ends the game. Well, this is second move order. Now, let's keep trying different things for black. Now, let me show you third move order that is, it's more likely than any other move order for black. g6, knight f3, bishop g7, knight c3, a6, bishop d3. I've had this order played against me multiple times. Bishop d3, b5, castle, bishop b7. That's what black wants. They want to go knight d7 and c5, or e6 and knight e7. And uh, after bishop b7, we go e e5. Now, we already looked at knight d7, where we play d6. Now, it's e6 is obviously very dangerous. Now, let's try e6 for black. We go a4, b4. We want this pawn on b4. Our plan is to go knight e4. But before we do that, it's very helpful to include these two moves, and you will see in a moment why. Knight e4. And now black has problems with concluding development. Something like knight e7 may run into bishop g5, and you will see that immediate problems black may encounter. So uh, after knight e4, d takes e. Well, actually, on knight e7, there is another very good move, which is a queen e1 attacking b4 pawn. That's another reason why a4, b4, move, including this move, is very good for white. And after a5, there is bishop b5 check. And on bishop c6, this position is nearly lost for black. e, d, c, d, and bishop f4. Black has way more problems than they can deal with. This is very bad for black. So, after knight e4, d takes e. But then we play, instead of knight e7, d takes e. Then we play d takes e, and knight d7. Black is immediately attacking the e5 pawn. Now we go queen e1. Here is another, another position where queen e1 uh, is a vital move in this. Uh, now we're attacking b4 pawn and immediately black has a problem. Protecting this pawn after bishop f4 or possibly bishop b5 will be very, very bad for black. 
So that's why they're trying to take on e5, knight takes e5, bishop takes e5, and now queen takes b4. Now you see, position is completely open. Black is not even close to conclude their development. Knight is on g8, king is on castle, bishop on b7 is hanging. After bishop g5, white is almost done with complete development and placing their pieces on a very active position. And after queen takes b4, suppose queen d5, we go rook e1, and after f5, we simply go rook a3. Now, this position is totally lost for black. They cannot develop. Now, the threat, it, knight cannot be taken because bishop takes e4. And just overwhelming threats such as rook b3 and bishop c4, black simply cannot even conclude development. Now, this is very typical, very, very typical, and very important for total evaluation of this opening. This is wrong opening because you cannot play for black, making too many pawn moves. You start with the tempo down, because you are black, and then you make one, two, three, four moves with a pawn, and you developing two bishops, fianchetto, and white is, every move that is made for white is towards the center, they castle, and they ready to start active operations. It's just a matter of a simple logic why this should be bad for black, and it is bad for black. I've said many times on various different DVDs uh, a phrase that fits almost every opening. You make your judgment based on the position. So based on the position, for example, in this position, white made every normal developing moves. Black made extra move a6. Now, if they go b5, it's too many pawn moves, and you see they developed only one bishop. You continue your development, and when they go bishop b7, as we already looked, we go e5, and starting the operation. If they go e6, you have to go immediately after getting more space and putting squeeze black's position and give them very hard choices. After e5, so you see, anything like d5 is absolutely ridiculous, like because we can go knight e2 and we have all the advantage on the king side, which I already mentioned here. And if they continue developing and neglecting it, we already said a4, b4, and knight e4, and that's not the only way to play. Well, you see, you made every move towards development. That's how you should treat every opening. Don't be afraid that, well, there is a one possible thinking for white, which is totally wrong. Well, I don't want to go e5 because his bishop on b7 is going to be very strong. Well, then what? Then you can keep both of your pawns on e4 and d4 because they blocking both bl black's bishops. But if you never go forward, you have to give your opponent a little bit to get yourself a lot. e5 is a great positional move, and you should be here extremely aggressive. I just mentioned a4 as probably the best continuation. But there is another very good continuation, rookie one, intending possibly d5. Well, or maybe e takes d followed by d5. 
to open position or go bishop g5. All these possibilities are very credible and very strong for white. Even, even bishop g5 right away, yeah, you have to notice that bishop takes f3 is not a good option because queen takes f3 and rook on a8 is hanging. So uh, all these variations are very good for white. The only thing I did that is helpful for you here, I just give you the motivation and give you logical explanation to this active play and also pointing on probably the best continuation a4 but other ways you play you will also get very very powerful position so hippo is definitely on the list of the openings that are wrong and you shouldn't be trying it for black. And best way to deal with it for white, to get very active, quick play and trying to open position as soon as possible. Now we will talk about the Gurgenidze system. And to me, it's the last of the three openings in a Pirk defense family. Well, for three openings, Pirk defense, Hippo and the Gorgonidze system. So e4, g6, d4, bishop g7, knight c3, c6. This is, again, I would very closely put it to the wrong openings. I've faced in my tournament life with this opening over 45 years ago. That's a long time ago. Against the order of this system, Kurgenidze, back in Georgia. And at that time, I played it very aggressively with uh, white, and I got good position, but then it was all changed and super aggressive way may not be the way to go. But definitely white has multiple opportunities here to get advantage, serious advantage. Now, one of the options, one of the possibilities that I will not recommend you to play is F4. Believe it or not, it's most popular move. But the reason I will not recommend you to play it, there is a hidden reason behind it. If you don't al already playing f4, and if you don't know exactly those positions very closely, you shouldn't play it. And the reason why is this. Because you're going to get closed position with black having concrete strategical plan and it's not working for you to dedicate a lot of time studying every little detail of this f4 d5 continuation because your probability of having this position in this opening are very low and time and effort you have to put in it is a lot greater. So, I wouldn't recommend you to put in there and give black a clear plan. And I would recommend to play simply knight f3 move. It's a good move and there are, after d5, many moves that give white advantage. There is bishop d3, there is bishop e3, there is very popular, probably the most popular move, h3. They are all very, very good for uh, white. Also, there is a possibility of going bishop c4. I would recommend you to play knight f3, but at the same time, I would recommend to play bishop c4. They are both equally good 
and equally aggressive. Let me run you through quickly through these uh, variations. Black has practically two moves here, d5 and d6. The way we, well, the way d5 variation goes, we take on d5, now black goes b5, they have to get the pawn back on d5. Bishop b3, and now b4. And when I played it several decades ago, in this position, I played d takes c, and after b takes c, queen f3, with the idea attacking on f7 and playing c7. I don't want to dedicate and take much time of yours about this, but I will tell you that that's not the way I would recommend you to play. This is not a good continuation for black, but I played like this 45 years ago. The best way to play is knight a4, and after cd, simply go a3. And this type of positions in the general, white has very solid advantage. The castle, they have outpost for c5, weak pawn on a5, they're gonna go bishop f4, black uh, uh, is very limited in space, white is much, much better. So this is not a very good way to play for black. And that's why the most expected move is d6. And on d6, we go queen f3, attacking the f7 square. Now, it's not recommended to play e6 for black. What is c6, d6, and e6? White simply goes knight e2 and is having a very comfortable advantage here. So the move that black should try is knight f6. But then we go e5, and this is comfortable advantage for white. After d takes e, d takes e, now black must go knight d5. Actually, it becomes sharp only for few moves, but if that's the only one short variation you have to study, it's worth studying. This is something you can learn in a matter of minutes. So knight takes d5, pawn takes d5, bishop takes d5, attacking f7, castling. Now we have to accept second pawn because we only have one extra pawn and if black recaptures on e5, they're gonna be okay. So we have to take on b7. Now queen a5 check. We go c3. On queen takes e5, we go knight e2, and uh, black has no compensation. Bishop takes b7, queen takes b7, and knight a6. Now, black is down two pawns, but we have to be careful here. Something like knight f3 may run into a knight c5 move, and the threat of knight d3 is very serious. Queen d5, simply rook d8, of course. And this is not the way you want to play. On knight a6, we have two extra pawns. What should we do? We have to play it safe. We can afford to give one pawn back and maintain one extra pawn. And we're gonna have very comfortable position. We go queen f3. And this is the best way to play it. Bishop takes e5, you simply go knight e2. Now black cannot stop you from castling and you will be okay. There is no knight c5. For example, with the idea on castling, go knight b3. Well, knight c5 is running into b4. So this is not possible. So black does not have here any real compensation. They are down a pawn 
and it's a big advantage for white. Now going back to knight f3 variation. As I already mentioned, bishop c4 is 100% okay, ambitious, and good continuation. So is knight f3. But for unknown to me reason, I did some research and I couldn't find real reason behind uh, knight f3 in this position. The only explanation here is that here is the explanation. A lot of times, e4, g6, d4, bishop, g7, white plays knight f3 first without knowing what is the opening going to be because black can go d6, go to regular peer, or they can go the same hippo that we talked about. So knight f3, d6, then you don't have that option. And now you go knight c3. But if you play knight c3 and black goes c6, I would prefer to play bishop c4, getting the position we already looked a moment ago. But if we had to get this uh, move order with knight f3, this is also quite good continuation. You can play, as I already mentioned, bishop e3 and bishop d3. They're all going to give you a very uh, good position. But h3 is the most ambitious way to play, to deprive a black a chance to go bishop g4. So if d takes e, knight takes e4, white has a clear advantage. On knight d7, you can go bishop d3, and on knight f6, even if you had to exchange knights, it's not very clear what is black gonna do with a bishop on c8. White has small but very, very stable long-term advantage. And the only ambitious continuation for black is uh, knight f6 here and again we can go bishop d3 getting the same type of position or playing e5 and after knight e4 this variation is good for white well after c5 black has to try to break up the center because pawn on e4 is hanging. After c5, we can go bishop c4, we can go e6, and I'm not gonna tell you what to do because there are multiple ways of getting very, very good position. One of the options is dc, for example, queen a5, check bishop d2, and on queen takes c5, bishop c3. Now you want to take the pawn on e4, getting an extra pawn, and something like this. Bishop takes e5 is running into a serious problem for black. After bishop takes, queen takes, and unexpected tactical shot, queen d8, check. King takes, knight takes f7, and you will see position of a kind of semi-end game position where material is equal and black has completely ruined pawn structure. White has big and serious advantage. So to finalize this opening Gurganese system, I will tell you, you can play with knight f3 or knight c3 um, move order. Again, I already explained why I don't want you to play f4 systems. And if you start with knight f3 after d6, after c6, you go knight c3 and on d5 h3, as we just looked. Or if you start with knight c3 on a third move, now you have a pleasant alternative to play knight f3 or bishop c4. 
where I give slight preference to bishop c4 move. In both cases, white gets solid, stable advantage. 